Hey, I'd like to welcome everyone. My name is Scott Williams, and I want to take a few moments to talk to you today about how it is that I manage my staff. And let me tell you, the simple answer to how I manage my staff is this. I don't. You know, I don't manage my staff. I lead my staff. You know, there's been this ongoing debate, an ongoing argument over managers versus leaders and what particular category that people may fall into. And so I'm telling you, after reading countless books and being in a number of different leadership roles in both nonprofit organizations, corporations, and I worked in politics and in ministry, I'm telling you, I've definitely witnessed the difference between the two. And I had the opportunity as a young leader to work for, I mean, a, a gentleman who was a great leader. I mean, he was the consummate leader. And his name was Marvin Weedman. He taught me some of the best leadership principles. And I really summed it up to this acronym that I call Beck. And he, again, was the consummate leader. And so as I'm sitting here thinking about Marvin, what he did, the B for Beck, it's B-E-C-C, -C, but the B was believe. I mean, he always believed in me. He believed in me. He believed in others. And I'm telling you, the E was he encouraged me. He encouraged me to, to be more, to do more. Uh, he was always an encourager. The C was is he challenged me. He challenged me to dream big, to think bigger, to do more. He challenged me spiritually. He challenged me professionally. And the last C, probably the most important, is he corrected me. I mean, if I got a little bit off balance, he always would correct me and bring me back in line. And I'm going to tell you, as we, as we look at leaders and managers, both have their role. But in, in their simplest form, here's the deal. Leaders develop followers, and managers manage people and things. And so leaders don't have subordinates because they're in the business, again, of developing followers in the business of developing other leaders. Where managers, on the other hand, they have to have subordinates. It's all about positional equity and telling uh, subordinate Joe or subordinate Sally to go make this widget and make it in this way. A leader, on the other hand, they're not worried about some positional equity or some formal authority because they know that they're in the business of creating a tribe and developing more leaders. And what we have to understand is that the business of following, it's voluntary. It's a voluntary action. And a lot of times, managers don't even realize this. And so the challenge for most managers, they don't realize that they're managing, that they're confusing managing with leadership. And so I'm going to look at, help us to look at these 10 simple category principles and category comparisons that will compare the difference between a manager and a leader. And so the first thing, when it comes to essence, the essence of all of this, managers, they're all about stability. Where a leader, on the other hand, they're all about change. You know, when it comes to rules, managers make the rules. Leaders, they break the rules, you know, for the sake of their organization, for the sake of what they're leading. When it comes to approach, you know, it's all about, for managers, it's all about planning the details. Where a leader, it's about setting the direction. This is where we're going. And when it comes to culture, uh, managers, they execute. And where leaders, they shape the culture. When it comes to conflict, managers oftentimes avoid conflict. Where leaders, they use conflict as an asset because they understand that there's no movement without friction. Uh, when it comes to direction, managers like to go down the existing road. I'm going to go this way. This is comfortable. Where leaders, they like to go down new roads. When it comes to credit, man, managers tend to take credit. Where leaders, they give credit to all those around, those who are making it happen. When it comes to decisions, Managers makes the decisions where leaders will generally facilitate the decision. They will encourage and, and, and create buy-in in a healthy way. When it comes to vision, managers tell and leaders, they sell. They sell the vision and direction. And this one is really important, the last one, number 10. When it comes to style, managers are generally transactional. I mean, what are the transactions to get this from there? Where our leaders, it's about being transformational, transforming people, transforming an organization, transforming a culture. Let me tell you, a great self-assessment uh, for you to determine whether or not you're leading or you're managing is to ask this question. And the question is this. If my position, title, role, or, or formal authority were removed, would the people that I'm leading still gladly follow me? If you can't answer that question honestly, ask those that are the closest to you to give you a candid answer. Because the reality is that people don't want to be managed. They want to be led. They want to follow a leader. 
I mean, just think about it. You, you're sitting there right now. You're, you're listening to people. You don't get excited about following world managers. You don't get excited about following business manager, education manager, religious managers. But you do get excited about following world leaders and business leaders and education leaders and religious leaders. Managers change things. Leaders change the world. I'm going to tell you this. I remember this quote from an Apple commercial. It was a campaign they did in the 1990s, a Think Different campaign. It featured MLK and Picasso and Gandhi and Einstein and others. And the commercial ended with this line. It said, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. Be a world changer. Be a leader.